Hello guys, this is Modest Major here, bringing you some commentary over some Slayer gameplay. It's taking place on the map Fathom. Uh, Fathom is probably one of my favourite maps in Halo 5. I think uh, Halo 5, if I were to level a criticism against its maps, um, I think that all of its maps uh, are at a really decent baseline. You know, if you compare the average map of Halo 5 to Halo 4, uh, it absolutely blows Halo 4 out of the water. Um, with maps like uh, Fathom, maps like Regret, maps like Truth, maps like The Rig. Um, a lot of these maps are really solid and I wouldn't really have too many criticisms to level against it. However, on the other hand, I don't think it has like a classic greatest of all time sort of map. I mean, that's a, a real shame because those are the maps I get the most excited about. And if anything, I could excuse Halo 4. I would get less annoyed and irritated at Halo 4's lesser maps just because of the level of quality of its best map, aka Haven which is one of the best maps of all time. Look, at Zero once made a video covering Haven in depth, and I agree with everything he said in that video. I'll leave a link to that in the description, because that's a bit of a Lurk at Zero classic. Um, but yeah, I think Halo 5 needs its map, where it's just like a map that every map should copy, and it's like kind of a staple of the series. Um, you know, a Guardian, a Pit, a Narrows. Uh, Halo 3 was the master of classic maps, in my opinion, um, but I'm a little bit biased because I'm a Halo 3 lover. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I, I do enjoy Fathom. It's probably one of the better maps on this game. I think it's uh, way above average um, and pretty enjoyable. Today, what I wanted to talk about, however, is gaming in 2016 uh, and what I want to see from it. More specifically, multiplayer gaming, because I think on the single player side of things, I actually think 2015 did a pretty good job, uh, especially towards the latter half of the year, uh, with games like Rise of the Tomb Raider, games like Fallout 4, uh, games like The Witcher 3, which actually bagged the Game of the Year award, um, from several publications, um, which I'm excited about because I actually think Witcher 3 is 100% worth trying. Uh, they literally poured effort and passion into that game, uh, and you can see it from pretty much every aspect. However, on the multiplayer side of things, I didn't quite necessarily get what I wanted uh, from my 2015, uh, you know, gaming experience. Um, I think they took a lot of turns for the worse in a, in a lot of ways. Um, and I'd personally like to see a change put to that in 2016. So I just want to talk about some things that would be really cool to see in 2016 um, and that I'd like to see change. Um, starting with a Halo spin-off. Now, there's been a couple of rumors in the works about um, you know Halo going uh, annual gaming releases. A lot of game companies have done it. Uh, we've seen Assassin's Creed do it. We've seen Call of Duty do it. We've seen uh, Far Cry do it. We've seen... Uh, just so games upon games upon games essentially uh, the Call of Duty series has done it for the longest time of course um, and if Halo were to do it I'd like to see them do it right and in my opinion the way to do it right is to do something completely off the beaten path uh, you know something like an ODST where we got a completely different gaming experience they didn't necessarily focus on the arena gaming multiplayer and you kind of knew you were getting a slightly lesser Halo experience um, but it was still special in its own right. You know, ODST was never going to last three years. It was never going to last uh, the same sort of lifespan as a Halo 3 or even a Halo 4, in my opinion. Um, but nonetheless, it was uh, gave us like an interesting story that we wouldn't necessarily see from the Halo saga, not involving Master Chief. Um, and I think they could do something like this similarly again. Um, obviously, with the advent of Halo Wars... Um, that's obviously the big rumor going around right now. I'd like to see another game where we see a focus on perhaps like the Swords of San Helios. Uh, you know, we didn't, we got to see a little bit of snippets of Arbiter in the newest game, and he kind of hinted at the fact that the Swords of San Helios were badasses and they'd gone around uh, messing people up and taking over territories. That sounds sick. I'd love to see a game uh, leveled around it, and I'd love to see a game from purely Arbiter's perspective. We got a taste of that in Halo 2. Maybe they could take it to the next level. Um, and I know some people would complain, oh, I hope they put multiplayer in it. I think you've just got to uh, put up with the fact that it takes a really long time to build a multiplayer from the ground up uh, that's satisfying. Maybe they could do a slightly more uh, insular, like... Um, you know, off the beaten path multiplayer where it's like less maps and a different style of gameplay with lower health or something like that. Uh, you know, maybe from the perspective of ODST soldiers, that would be cool. But like, I don't, I don't want them to waste too much time on it. And I think it would be more interesting if they gave us something completely different. Um, next, I want to say Call of Duty. I want to see that go back to more older school gameplay. Um, because I think Call of Duty has been going in this futuristic direction for a little bit too long. I think they've lingered on this genre a little bit too long. And I don't think they've done 
that much interesting with it. You know, if you're going to go futuristic, I want to see, uh, you know, futuristic looking architecture. I want to see stuff that's bursting with color. I want to see you experiment with weaponry uh, in a way that like a Halo does or like a Quake or an Unreal Tournament. You know, the reason those games are so exciting in the futuristic genre is because um, they experimented with the fantastical. They did stuff that you wouldn't be able to do with the modern gaming genre. And in a lot of ways, they don't really do that. It's just an excuse to shoehorn uh, the thruster packs in to uh, shoehorn free running or double jumps, which you could do in like modern gaming, let's be honest, that isn't an aspect of futuristic, but um, they put that behind the idea of mech suits. Um, and I think also like, you know, when, when we've got a Halo game uh, coming out every three years, what I like from Call of Duty is that it was a change of pace, it was a different flavor. Um, and World at War is one of the finest examples of that. World at War was just, there wasn't really another game like that on the multiplayer market. And I'd like to see them go back to a World War type genre where we see something, uh, you know, we see a genre and we see a, 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 a period of time that isn't that much covered in the multiplayer side of things. Uh, and they can experiment with that. Um, it would be really exciting and I think we need to move away from the Advanced Warfares and the Black Ops 3 for just a little bit, you know. Um, unless they're willing to get more creative and more experimental and, and, and just basically bring better ideas to the table, I would say. I would rather see different genres explored and give us more variety on the console side of things. Um, next would be more high health shooters at the top. Uh, right now, if you look at what's the biggest shooter in multiplayer gaming, it would probably have to be CSGO. And for me, um, I am more focused and concerned about high health shooters. Um, that's just something I've always liked. I think it offers a, a greater deal of interaction between the players. There's more of a back and forth. You know, one player takes this initial lead over the other player, but then the other player has this small chance and this small window of getting a clutch comeback, of landing his shots. That's why Halo is so exciting to me. Uh, that's why arena shooters are so exciting to me in general. Um, and I just like to see... Um, a game get to the top um, and be viewable in an esports setting that has really high health, a really high level of interaction between the players. Because sometimes CSGO, in my opinion, has a lower level of interaction than I would like to see. It's more, it's more of an overarching strategy, and uh, a lot of it is slow playing and, and whittling down your opponents and getting them to make a move first. Whereas I prefer, you know, fast-paced, hectic action. Um, and back and forth interaction between the players. That's just my opinion. That's why I actually watch Super Smash Bros. Melee competitively because that game um, has a huge degree of interaction between the players um, and also a high <laughs> amount of health. Um, next, I want to say is a console game to peak in popularity. As I was just saying, you know, the games that we see at the top right now are League of Legends, your Dota's, and your CSGO. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, gaming on the PC, I prefer gaming. Uh, with a controller. Um, I'm a little bit biased there, you know, it's obviously preference for the most part, but I've also like um, got like uh, friend groups on the console side of things, especially on the Xbox, um, and it's just where I've always gamed and I'd kind of like that to continue. And I don't think I've gone off console gaming. A lot of people say, oh, maybe I'm growing out of console gaming. I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think console gaming is growing out of us. I don't think it's like uh, walked alongside us as we've like grown up you know like as this as the previous generation has grown up and their tastes have changed and um it hasn't really followed alongside them it's kind of catering to a different audience it's catering to a newer audience and i think that's a little bit sad because i think uh console gaming uh could peak in popularity if it had followed our tastes a little bit better um if it had capitalized more on its sequels and if it hadn't tried to capitalize on an audience that wasn't there yet you know they were trying to they were trying to sell games to people uh who weren't even playing the consoles yet and i think they've suffered you know they tried to bring in this wide gaming audience instead of focusing on making the audience happy that were there in the first place and i think that's a real shame and i'd personally just like to see a console game pop off in the same way that a halo 3 did in the same way that a call of duty modern warfare did um, because it's just so exciting when everyone's got this this buzz and everyone's kind of on the same page about being so excited for gaming and i'd love to see in 2016 whatever the game is you know i'm not i'm not picky about it, it doesn't have to be a halo game it doesn't have to be a call of duty game it could be a new ip but just to see a multiplayer game uh, capture everyone's attention, excitement, and get everyone talking about it would be really cool. You know, maybe it will be Overwatch, but I have a feeling that Overwatch is not going to be that great. But I'll talk about that. that. That's a different topic for another video. 
Uh, last but not least, the last topic I want to talk about is less dumbing down. Um, I think we saw this more in Destiny and in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Um, and, and talking about Call of Duty getting dumbed down um, is a little bit uh, ridiculous in my mind. It's something I shouldn't have to say, yet the problem is actually persisting and it is actually getting worse. Uh, which I hear of supers, uh, because I think supers are one of the worst mechanics I've come across in gaming pretty much ever. Um, you know, the idea that you get a kill streak for doing literally nothing, and the kill streaks are actually of a high nature. You know, you look at Call of Duty Black Ops 3, there's a uh, super for coming back from the dead, uh, there's a super to get a one hit kill where you pound the ground, uh, which is also in Destiny, the Titan Smash. Uh, in Destiny, you had the uh, pistol that got the, uh, the one hit kill bullets, like. It, it literally baffles me that Destiny PvP was popular. It baffles me that this wasn't some like big gaming joke that we all laughed at, at for the fact that the developers could be so foolish that they think we could consume a product of that nature where people were getting like kill streaks for free and running around the map and killing one another literally for doing basically nothing. Like, I, how is that not ridiculous? Like. Kill streaks are already kind of a ridiculous idea. The fact that you can get 11 kills without dying and you get a chopper gunner. In, in Modern Warfare 2, you could get basically 4 kills without dying and get a chopper gunner. You know, that seemed ridiculous to me. But Modern Warfare 2 looks like the pinnacle of competitive gaming, the pinnacle of gaming balance and design in comparison to the super systems, uh, most specifically in Destiny. You know, I could harp on about, about Black Ops 3, but... At the very least, they they make the ticker take a really long time to go round. It's still not perfect, and I still think it's a little bit laughable, and I'd still be annoyed if Destiny never existed and, and Black Ops 3 was the first game to do it. Um, but but it has to come to a stop eventually. You know, if, if we endorse this, and if we let this happen, if we say, oh, this is fantastic news that we got these new supers, they're so exciting. Ha ha ha. Like, no, just put your foot down and say, enough's enough, this is stupid. Let's please put some good game mechanics into my game so I don't have to get bullshitted around every single corner. And, uh, like, you know, you basically live in fear because every corner you go around, you could potentially die. Um, and I think just games in general, they need to stop going the direction of, of dumbing down uh, in 2016. Um, a little bit more respect to the players would be kind. Because um, you, you want to feel a sense of achievement when you learn the game's systems. Um, and some people say, oh, you know, I, I think I think gaming is just done um, in terms of, uh, you know, bringing games to the table that have a high skill curve. I don't necessarily think that's true because I think League of Legends, Dota, CSGO, um, I think a lot of the most popular games around right now um, actually give a lot of respect to the players. And I think people just haven't had a game that's respected them in so long in the multiplayer side of things that they've forgotten what that's even like. Um, and they start to believe it's a myth. But really, I just don't think we've seen a game like that in a long time. Halo 5 is probably the closest, in my opinion. Um, but nonetheless, I have been Modest Major. I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary. Let me know in the comment section what you would like to see from gaming in 2016. Multiplayer gaming. And uh, regardless, thanks very much for watching, guys. Peace out.